call this June 19th evening. Commissioner Green Order. We have the auditor, all three commissioners, and the county attorney present. Uh, first on the agenda, we're going to do the Yoder Estate uh, the public hearing. Uh, Warren, is it? Well, how long is it you and Lauren? Yeah, yeah, Lauren. Um, come on up here. Yes. Okay. Do we need to open a special public hearing meeting for this? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. And then it's uh, just after six here on six nineteen. I'll open up this public hearing for the uh, Yoder Estate. First of all, thank you for tabling this matter so I can get an opportunity to be here. I am here on behalf of the James R. Yoder Estate. He passed away here recently. He owns a half interest in a house over in Akron. It is an old farmhouse on 12 acres with some outbuildings. The other half interest belongs to Susan McFarland. In probating the estate, we have come to the realization that Mr. Yoder has no family. So his half interest should pass to his family, but he was um, never married with kids. His parents are passed with an only child, so he has no siblings. That gets us to the bottom of the probate statute, which means that his half interest in the house sheets to the state. And when I called down to the attorney general's office, they said, well, that's a county issue. So that's why I'm here. You, as the county, technically own a half interest in this house. Susan McFarland is an interested buyer in the other half interest. She would love to own 100% of the property so she can use it as collateral on a loan to invest in a business within the county. And so I'm here to ask what your plan is going forward. Christina uh, shared with me that there is a statute governing your ability to sell, um, having to have two appraisals done. I will leave that advice up to your own attorney though as to how you need to proceed under that statute. Okay, so yes, um, Indiana Code 361114 talks about the sale or transfer of the real estate. So the first thing we need to do is get two appraisals on it, licensed by licensed appraisers, so that we know exactly what we're dealing with. So that's uh, probably the first step. And then the statute goes on to talk about how we want to get rid of it or sell it or keep it or what we want to do with it. So I think that the appraisals need to be done first so that we then have an idea of what its value is. So what, what are our options? I mean, I mean after, after we have the appraisal. We can we, sell it to her. Okay, we don't have to take bids um, out for, I mean, we, we can't let her have it for. Uh, let's see, we can determine a minimum bid and we have to we have to advertise it for sale, so we're going to have to go through that. Did you read the statute, Lauren? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to advertise it and put it up for sale. Now, the, the interesting part and that we probably wouldn't have very many takers is that they're going to own it with Susan McCarthy. Mm -hmm. So we're basically selling our part of it, right? So I guess if somebody wants to own half interest in a house and so what happens if we don't get no interested parties? Well, Susan, Susan, Susan would be the interest. Oh, okay. Susan well, she got, is. She got funding interest. She okay. would. Okay. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So then we'll have to determine like a minimum bid on it, and then we're going to have to advertise it. So, so, but you all need to decide. I guess right now, did you want to keep it? I guess my personal opinion, I think I, that's how I think we can do it. Is I mean, you know, she was obviously with this gentleman, and, and they had a, a life. I, mean, I don't, I'm not a hard time somebody else to walk in on her and, and I, have, I, have interest in it. You know, I, that's the trouble part of it all. I know, but the statute, and I, I, I think you concur with me, Lauren, that it has to be yeah. put out there legally. Yeah. Just it's like a other things that, that we said, like again. Yeah. 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 He, yeah, he did not get his estate in order very well. The thing you can do is set a gracious minimum bid. Right. Well, I mean, I, whatever it costs, I mean, if, if whatever a realtor fees, an appraisal fee is what I would think. I mean, we don't need to make money. Any, any, any more hardship on a family yeah. than, than Right. And then hope yeah. that nobody else decides well, that's the price they want to buy a half interest. <laughs> I, don't I, mean, I, 
Right. And you own a half interest, you have access to all of the property, so you could, I guess, make it really difficult for her to be there. Right. But that, unfortunately, that's what we have to do. So if somebody comes up with a valid bidder, we have to sell it to them. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why estate planning is so important. <laughs> <laughs> that is our commercial for this evening. Yes. Stays in order. Yes, I mean, his is really not in order. Yes. So, because we have to have the plan. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. But I think we're all agreed on we're going to, we don't want to hang on to it. I know. I know. Yeah. 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 Is that right? Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> So I would just uh, go ahead and do a motion to move forward with this and get the appraisers. And interesting and wish then to get two appraisals on this piece of property. Okay, do you want to do to that? To move. Okay, we'll have Lauren go ahead and do that. That way she can. Yeah, we need to. Okay, you, you motion. Uh, I'll second it. Okay. So is there any any public comment on? <coughs> okay, hearing none. All in favor? That motion carries three zero. Thank you. Is there anything you want? Okay, just Thanks, Lauren. let me know. I'll be good then. All right, thank you. Then I entertain a motion that we close this public hearing under the order for state. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3 0. Okay. We are down to uh, Christine Walsh. Are you good? Good. All right. I am here to update you on downtown activities. Um, the festival this year is August 26th from 11 to 11. And I'm asking for use of the courthouse property, water, electric, just like every year I've asked. I guess we asked one year. I mean, we are not spiking anything. Okay, that's that was my question. No yeah. spikes. Yeah. I mean, we have canopies, but there nothing is spiked in the Okay, yeah, yeah that's just the concern. So, yeah. yeah. Sounds good, Dad. Yeah. Okay. No um, then I will let you know about Boo Fest, which we don't. We set up canopies on the sidewalk. <coughs> Some, some businesses who are not downtown like to give out candy too, so they set up on the side. Okay. Okay. And that is October 27 from 4.30 to 6. What was that date again? October 27th or 2nd? 7th. 7th, yeah. And you're welcome to come to Kashi and give out. They don't need them. Also, we got a claim in here tonight. We got a claim And then the other is the holiday stroll. That is Friday, December 1st. Six to eight. Christine, are you asking them for the lawn electric water for all these events? Is that what you're asking for? No. Or just, I'm, or just I'm letting you just know. Unless you would like for me to ask for electric and water for anything, it's basically an update. Um, actually, for I may need electric or holiday stroll. It's the ice carver. Now we've got a new maintenance man, so we'll have to carry it here. I don't know if you know carry it here. So we'll have to give you his information or give you his information. So you can get a hold of him so we can arrange all that for you. Yeah, okay, good. Um, there is no house, I understand, on courthouse property. I that. news to me, but that's true. It was. Yeah. It sure was. Well, what? Why? I don't know the why. 
No, I know that. I, I, um, it has to do with who's constructing it and who owns it, and I guess there's a lot of pokers in the fire, so to speak. Um, so, yes, as far as I know, as of now, Santa's house will not be on the courthouse property. But you know, the reindeer, ice cutter, stuff we normally have. Good. It will be on the um, Centennial Park. Oh, okay. It is going there. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. We'd love to see it all, so we yeah. appreciate it. Okay. Any, any questions for me? Or? Sounds good. All right. Thank you very much. We have department updates. Starting to back, John Geyer, Highway Department. Give me, John.
close it uh, the first of July, I think November 5th is open day, free open day. Okay. So that will mess up part of those. Yeah, will mess up part of those. Okay. <laughs> 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 but that's a lot better news than what we previously yeah, yeah. heard. They do have a, a hard date of changing the cable, so they are going to do it on the 30th. So that, that's pretty ironclad, I guess. So, um, the community crossing project, I did have that. I should have got your signatures for that uh, at the last meeting. Um, that we had when we had bid opening. I just need to grab those and I need to get Finn and Brown's signatures yet too. But uh, if I could grab them from the blue ink tonight. You got blue ink? Basically, what she's talking about, we had a <coughs> sidewalk for 
going for the school evacuation route. We had it all in plan, ready to go out for bid. The NDOT had already signed off on it. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of that. It already signed off of it. They got, I don't know, somehow they reviewed it again and decided they wanted to make some changes, changes on it. They wanted to. Yeah, they had some additional folks review a permit request who were not part of previous discussions and did not agree with the recommendations that NDOT made previously. And so have requested some scope changes to the project that could be significant. We're still trying to work through those and want to make sure that we're meeting with the, who's actually the decision maker at NDOT to make sure that the permit does get through. So that's where we are, not giving up. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Basically everything I've got for you tonight. Uh, any questions for me? Yes, you have appropriations that was supposed to come through tonight that you ain't you want pulled out. Is that correct? Yeah, the one for the power room, the seven seven thousand or seventy thousand two hundred. Oh, that would need to go through. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I think that was approved at the morning meeting a couple weeks back. The seventy-two thousand. Okay. Tomorrow. Okay. So the other one, you're going to figure out what you're going to do and represent it, or yes. Uh, we talked about the last meeting too about chip and seal. Things were kind of put on hold. Has anything been able to change concerning that? Yeah. We'll have to regroup and. and uh, Does it just need to be advertised, or do we? Need Yes, we have to get this figured out and re advertise correctly. Yeah, because I know we've got some rooms that are needing to get back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any so that's where I'm at. Okay. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave this one here and it has to be attested by Christina and he's on the table. This one? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Josh Schrauss, IT. Thank you, Josh. Hey, good evening. Part of the four of you. Good. A little update on what's been going on. Three of you, I know, are well aware. Probation was moved in last week. Pretty seamless process. Didn't really have too many hiccups. Uh, had a couple of tickets go through the following morning on some simple things, but I think everything's tied together and they're good to go. Haven't heard anything more since. Um, pretty easy transition. Uh, the other update that kind of go, coincides with that, uh, switches, we, you know, a couple months ago finally received all the switch equipment that we had ordered. Uh, we just have the annex and the courthouse left to replace and then we'll be complete. So there's still some boxes set out in the hall, but other than that, uh, we're, pretty, we're making pretty good progress on that. So we're good there. Um, intend on starting on the highway department as far as those security cameras here in the next week or two. Uh, either this week or next, as far as getting the wire ran over to the garage and then getting the cameras up. We talked with both of the Johns about that. Um, I think we're good to go. We discussed possibly locate that needs to be done in between the office complex and the shed area. But other than that, we've got a conduit that runs across, so we should be good to go. Shouldn't be a lot of issues there. Um, other than that, as far as circuit court, I don't know if the three of you have seen the upgraded circuit court. Um, pretty impressive. It's worth a look. It does. I know the judge is looking to move forward with that. Judge uh, Lee and Devin and I did a test call out to the jail last week. We went through flawlessly. Uh, the audio quality was great. The video quality was great. Um, I think he's waiting on, if I remember correctly, he's waiting on two jury monitors there at the jury stand, um, and he's waiting on the sound panels. There was a manufacturing defect with the paneling, so that's put us behind a little bit. So. That's kind of an update of what's been going on. How big a screen was that? Uh, it's big. It, it, it's big. <laughs> I was in there the other day for me. It's like 98, up, 98 or 100 inches, yeah. and it's a large screen. Yeah. And, and what, I mean, honestly, what's nice about it, I think they're already utilizing the court, and Holly, you can speak up, because you probably know better than I do. I've heard the judge talk about it a little bit. They are taking advantage of Travis, you probably know. They're taking advantage of 
not transporting. The, yes, yeah. yeah, and the, the monitor, as far as documents, they can put the documents right up on right. the screen, everybody can see it, so it really is a very, very nice system, and I think once and we- And they pull, swivel, so when your client yes. acts up, you can just do that. That's right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's definitely, we're taking a look, if you haven't seen it, if you guys get a chance, we can do a little run demo with you, and you can check it out. Before I go into the fun stuff, the bad part, do you guys have anything that, that I need to be aware of or Devin needs to be aware of here in the next coming weeks? Anything that's outstanding that needs to be taken care of? The only thing I've been on the, is the website. Yeah, we need to eventually get our, our website. Yep, yeah, you bet. Yep. And okay. we, we've got an upgrade process for that, and that should be pretty seamless when we get that going. Just want to kind of get some loose ends. And yeah, I know you've been busy. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But, but other than that, yeah, we definitely know we need to do that. There's going to be a complete, you know, revamp as far as the, the structure of it all together. Not only the information, but the structure as well. Yeah. So, all right. So, the three of you are aware, I've talked to you in the last month or so about the infrastructure that we have currently. Our storage and compute resources are going end of life in 2024. If you flip to the second page, not the first page, we'll get back to that. If you look to the second page, you'll notice this is a timeline here of our converged systems life cycle. On uh, February of 2023 of this year, uh, the end of renewal went into effect. We can no longer renew our maintenance contracts with those devices. Now, unlike our typical computer systems where they're sitting on your desktop, that happens no big deal. The problem with this is, this is all of our data across the county. Um, every location that we have stores data on these, on these systems. They're expensive systems. It kind of breaks my heart because when you look at the cost of these, we have had these for seven years now. Um, it's hard to sit there and just do away with equipment that the companies unfortunately kind of have our hands tied. What we'll run into is, so we have two Unity 450s, which is the second well, it would be, if you look at the page, it would be the last line down, uh, the VX block 350 Unity AF, all flash, which AF means all flash Gen 2. If you look there, we have two 450Fs. We have one here at the annex and we have one at the detention center. Those go end of life, service life, February of 2024. We can no longer renew February 2023. The same goes for the 300 hybrid system that we use for our backup storage, and that goes into life. I will say on that system, we're running low because of our retention schedule. The data at rest on that machine sits as an archive, basically, and as an active backup that we're gobbling that up pretty quickly. You said you said these are seven years old, is that? They're seven years old, yes. Is that pretty much standard? I mean, when you buy, for, you buy electronics? Now, for, for the SANS, for the storage, the storage area network devices, yes. I mean, it's kind of typical, it's run the mill. We had uh, a VNXC system at both locations prior, it was about seven years for that. It was a little under, but close to seven years, so. Josh, if you did, for the public here, just a brief, what end of life means and what happens if you don't do. So, so this is my major concern with end of life with these systems. It's not the fact that the hardware itself is bad. The hardware is fine. The problem that we have is EMC Dell no longer supports that. For example, if I decided today to sit there and order additional storage for that, which would require a shelf, basically it's just a shelf, it looks like a server rack, or a, a server itself, it's just full of hard drives. If I put that in, I could add storage. The problem is, the storage is no longer, you can no longer purchase a shelf for that and have it supported <coughs> anymore. They, they, it's, it's done. Um, my biggest concern with this is the operating environment. It would be like with anything else with cybersecurity issues that are constantly going around. The operating system for our storage arrays are no longer being upgraded at the end of service life. Once you hit that end of service life, you're not gonna get any more updates. Does the equipment still work? Absolutely, it still works. And that's a hard pill to swallow because you know it's still gonna get you by what you need to do. But the problem is, if we make a phone call, we have something happen to the equipment, we're no longer gonna get support for that. Does it worry me? Devin and I can sit there and place drives all day long in certain parts in the units, but there's other parts that we just cannot replace. And if Dell's no longer manufacturing and supporting those devices, we're at a standstill. 
being the fact that we have these devices and we utilize these throughout the county, if we go down, it's just not one department that goes down, it's multiple departments. Basically, the white meteor insurance is done and something happens yep. or just yep. around. Yep. Yep. And, 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 and I hate saying this in a, in a kind of a grotesque way, but it's the company also telling me we want more money. Mm. <laughs> well, it is. It is. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's the truth. Yeah. And then if you flip to the second page, you can kind of see the important notice. It's talking about the uh, end of standard support for the Unisphere Central, and that's the software that these storage arrays run on. So how long, you know, you went ahead and got ordered and whatever and started the process out with that? So with the system that I'm proposing, Dell is very, very strict about the installation process. It's basically a turnkey solution. They build it customized to your needs, they bring it in, they set it up, and then after that, they say, do what you want with it. We know we can set it up as well, but you don't have a choice with this system. They come in and they set it up. When I talked with Dell, I asked them what the time frame would look like, should we order a system like this, and they said six to eight weeks. And with the new switch equipment that we have in place, we're gonna be able to support the new systems. Um, basically, we'll just go ahead and get into it. I'll get back to the original quote. So unlike the traditional systems that we have now, we have compute resources, basically servers, processors, memory, that attach to the storage. They coincide with one another. Um, with that system, it's been pretty traditional for us. That's what our go-to has been. With this new system, this is a VX rail system. This is a completely hyper-converged infrastructure system. Basically what it is, think of it as servers, traditional servers with storage in each server. There's six nodes. Those are the servers. The nodes are considered the servers. There's six nodes at the annex building. There's six nodes out at the detention center. They communicate, they see a heartbeat between one another, data is shared across the board between the two systems. If the one system goes down over here, the other system automatically takes over. We've set up our network here at the annex and at the detention center. It already acts. If one side goes down, the other side takes over. This one, we want to stay true to that. We've been happy with that. It's really kept us out of a lot of issues in the past where we've had to take something down. It doesn't affect anybody. It doesn't affect everyone as a whole. It just affect certain segments and that's it within the, the county. Um, so there is a total of, uh, excuse me, not six nodes, five nodes here at the annex, five nodes out of the detention center. Uh, there's licensing involved too, just like what we have with our storage. We would carry the current licenses that we have now for the storage. There's more compute processors with this setup than what there was with the previous. We know that we want it if we're going to spend this kind of money. I, this system here, unlike the seven years, the system, you need to replace or upgrade a node. It doesn't matter the time frame. You can put another node in place and I'll marry right in. Now granted, it still has to be a VX rail system. Then it doesn't matter if it's a VX rail system that's three, four, five years down the road. It'll merge right in with this system here. So if we say, hey, we're running out of compute resources, we're running out of storage, we can just put another node in place and it'll marry right in with this current system that we're proposing. Have they indicated how long life expectancy of this system is? This system should be about 10 years. And then if we want to add on to it, we can always add on to it. And then as we deem fit, we can sit there and take the other nodes out of service <coughs> and, and replace it as we go with new nodes. So unlike what we have now, where we have one individual storage unit here, one individual storage unit over at the detention center, this is multiple nodes. So each node is had, will have 10 drives in it. So you have five servers, 10 drives across each one. They create a virtual area, uh, basically a vSAN. It's like what we have now, but it's virtualized. All those drives communicate with one another. You can chop them up, do whatever you want with them, but they all communicate with one another. Trying to, trying to put this into terms, and I'm probably way out there, forgive me, but Unlike now, where we're relying on one piece of hardware for storage, this is multiple units, five nodes, acting as storage arrays. And they all communicate with one another. You can marry them together, you can separate them, you can do whatever you want with them. We currently have VMware licensing that we're current with, but we're gonna need, with the additional processing power, we're gonna need additional licenses. So we will be carrying over our traditional licenses that we have now 
and then add the additional licenses along licensing along with this. Uh, the other benefit that we have is right now we've virtualized our servers. We intend on in the future virtualizing our desktops as well. It gives us more manageability and it gives us more longevity with the physical piece of hardware on people's desks. No longer do we have to worry about compute resources or memory resources on that particular desktop model that sits there at the secretary's desk or the assessor's desk because all the compute is being done off of these units. So it takes care of two things for us. It does our compute and our storage for our servers that we already have. We have 52 virtual servers as it stands now throughout the county. And then this, as we go on, this will take care of our desktops as well. It will give us more longevity on our desktops. Instead of having to sit there and constantly swap out desktops every so many years, this will sit there and allow us to sit there and run the compute on the actual nodes themselves, not on the desktop. You'll still have a desktop there. You still have to have a means to get that information there. But the resources on the desktop are no longer concerned like they would be in the past. Um, I guess I'll ask you, do any of you have any type of questions? One thing I'll, I'll bring up, this is built in with five years of support for the hardware already. So there's no the price is built in five years. years. Five years, it's a four hour response time, 24-7 um, on-site service. And I'm not a big fan of on-site service just because it's not necessarily needed. We can do a lot of that ourselves. But with these particular devices, there are certain parts. For example, three years ago, we had our SAN have an issue and we asked if they could send the part to us so we could replace it and they said, not this one. We have to have a tech physically come on site and verify that it's working again. And we're gonna run into the same thing with some of this, some of this equipment. But again, it's still service, serviceable by us as well. To a point. So I'll just get down to the meat and potatoes. Uh, the total cost, the total cost for this is um, $933,258.33. And if I'm looking at this right, you got $982,760 in the bond for it. There is, so let me go back. My understanding, unless things have changed, there is on the bond for the five year go bond, there's a storage area network at four hundred and fifty seven thousand seven hundred sixty dollars seven hundred and sixty dollars. There's the VX Rail uh, virtual hyperconversion infrastructure for three hundred and fifty thousand. And then there's the VMware licensing renewal at eighty five thousand. That takes that cost to eight hundred and ninety two thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars. And then Coom for twenty twenty three. There was $100,000 in there at the beginning of the year. I have spent 30,000 of that. I think I'm hovering right around 69. You have spent 30,000? Yes. So so this number will be subtracted by 30,000. So you got $962,760 to spend. Correct. And then there is that VDI line item too, which is virtual, virtual desktop. Yeah. that I'm sure we could probably use some of those funds for it as well, being the fact that it is for virtual desktop integration also. Where do you have? It would be, it's not highlighted, Rick, but it's the 120. Oh, I see it, I see it, 120. Okay, okay. But the way I figured, you got enough money and then a little bit. Correct. I'm not asking for any additional money. I'm just asking for your blessing <laughs> to move forward. We know that we're going to have to do replacement. <clears throat> One of the things that's been asked, which was rightfully so, the three of you I think had asked me before if I had gotten other pricing. The problem with Dell, EMC, HP, any of these large vendors anymore, when you call up a rep, they lock that rep in. They get the best price. Nobody else can sit there and bid against that person. So that's what I'm up against. When I called up Dell EMC, I told them what vendor <coughs> I like to use, or a reseller, I told them IT savvy, and they locked Eric in for the best pricing. And I asked Dell what we have done as far as price is concerned. The first price that came in was about $150,000 to $175,000 higher. We've got that, that price down. So we've worked them away. And I think in the past, when I've talked to you guys, whether it be our company equipment <coughs> or our firewalls, we've always really knocked them down on price. So I've tried to knock them down the best I can. The only question I got is that satisfied the bid. Would that apply to the actual hardware? Because I know with a process like this, again, with Eric being locked in, 
Dell will not get out fronts than anybody else with Eric at IT Sathy being locked up. And if you would like me to talk with him tomorrow before I go to council tomorrow evening, I can give you a better explanation on how that works. That's all they need. Yeah, because what you're saying is we don't have anybody to bid in and out to to get more than one bid. Correct. <coughs> Correct. Yeah, because what Dell EMC will do, the opportunity will be locked in with Eric at IT Sathy. And that would be his opportunity. I, I think that's the exception that if if there's only one company that makes green turtles, then you can't go anywhere else to get any other green turtles. So there's nobody else to get. And I can get that. I can talk, Holly. I can talk to John uh, Femia from uh, Dell EMC, and then bring Eric on the line too, and have a conference call with him in the morning, <laughs> and ask him if he can send me some documentation on how that opportunity yes. works. Yes. And, and make sure Holly gets that she's going to be the one to tell us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because absolutely. we need something that says there isn't anybody else out there that we can get a bid from. Yeah. And, and I know they've locked in this price for me. It's the typical run right. of the mill, you know, exactly. we're going to hold on to this price for you. But it, I think that, you know, we, we've shown them that we're pretty serious. I spent a lot of time on the phone with this group uh, back and forth. Right. And I, I think they know, um, you know, if, if it takes us a little bit more time, it takes us a little bit more time. I mean, if they want to make the money from us, they're going to have to be willing to work. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I, I, I don't see that we got a choice. I honestly, I hate to spend that kind of money. I know they evidently have been, for you guys, has been seeing this coming because you put it in the yes. bond and you put it in, so you've got the money. I appreciate that. Yep. Yep. But, uh, yeah, we got to satisfy it, make sure we're satisfied right. on the bidding so, process so we don't get it. So kind of give you an idea of longevity with this system compared to the current system. Our current system that we have now, our storage capacity is 25 terabytes, a little over 25 terabytes. That's for the two systems operating in conjunction with one another. That's not our backup system that our backups go to. This is active data on a daily basis. We're right around 85% usage with that. Down the road, we've overheard rumblings about, you know, tying in with some other systems elsewhere and, and you know working together should that happen of course looking at just data retention in general um, i've watched one of our biggest uh, gobblers of data has been spillman over the last couple of years because we're putting a lot of information in spillman whether it be you know photos this or that it's there um, we've watched that you know grow over time has it has grown rapidly no but it's grown the other thing that I wanted to look at with this new system that I found attractive personally and Devin did as well, is this is going to take care of two birds with one stone. This is not only going to continue on our virtualization path with our servers, which has done wonders for us, but it's also now going to bring us into the realm of the desktops as well. So it buys us a little bit more time with the desktops. Do we spend an absorbent amount of money on desktops? Not necessarily compared to other things, but the one thing that we have done in the past with our desktops Unlike a lot of traditional market, you know, enterprises or, or companies where they buy the bare minimum and then they sit there and they turn around and they replace it within three years, we try to buy something that's going to put us in play for five to six to seven years. And the way I look at it would be the same way that any of you would look at it too, is sure it costs a little bit more, but what a lot of people don't factor in is that's time and money that you pay, Devin and I, to sit there and take the equipment out, put it back in place, image it, all that. So it's, it's going to make things a lot more simplified for us. It's basically, we can create an image for a desktop, we can roll it out to the courts, for example, and they're good to go. They say they want to make a change, they're good to go. From a management standpoint, it's, it's a much easier process for us. Um, but again, I know it's a lot of money. Um, with this, this buys us more longevity as far as the hardware is concerned and the licensing. Um, we still will, within five years, have to renew that licensing. But beyond that, you know, what, what is the license? The licensing is pretty hefty. I mean, it's we're going to have to budget for that every five years. Right around 100 to 175, depending. Okay. Yeah. But again, this is what everything unfortunately runs on with the county. I think we only have two or three physical servers now within the county. Everything else is virtualized. But it's also given us the ability when vendors come in to tell them no. We don't need to sit there and purchase the hardware from you. We can create the specs that you want on the fly and have it ready for you in 15, 20 minutes. I mean, literally, it's that, that easy for us. So, unless there's some special circumstances. <coughs> so, I guess we wait and see whether we can 
accept it, so we have to do go a different route, right? Yep. I got it. This is the back row, Phil. Question. Is the additional new uh, licensing included in the 933? Yes. Yeah, five years. It yes. Is? Yep. Yep. Okay. That would bring us to five years. Okay. As far as the license is concerned. And you said this was a new system. Did, did you mean new system to you? You don't mean an entirely new system. It's it's so, so uh, the it, bugs have been all right. It's yeah. Just oh, no, this is, to you. So you know, there there was a couple of counties that, that that I verified that I know for certain. Of course, are larger counties. Okay. That Howard and Jefferson County both are using this VX Rail system, and they've been very no happy. Issues, they're happy. And this VX Rail system has been out for many years. Okay. But it's just been one of those that you know when we first started out, we had a long road ahead of us. I mean, we went from traditional servers to virtual servers and getting the storage in play and trying to get everybody married together and communicating so this is kind of our next step and personally for me you know i look at this is probably the next time somebody comes to you guys and sits there and asks for a major hardware hardware upgrade like this or additional nodes it may not be me it may be Devin. i mean i'm not i'm not saying that i'm not going to be here but i'm also saying that i intend on this to be from a storage and compute side of things one of the last big ones that I come to you and beg and grovel for. So. Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. That answered my questions. That was all. Any other questions? Okay. So all I'm asking is your blessing to present it to the council tomorrow evening. Uh, like I said, I will sit there and talk with uh, John from Dow, talk with Eric, and tell him that we need to get some documentation together that supports the opportunity and that it's locked in. And that nobody else can go after that. Yeah, yeah. As long as you have the documentation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that good for you, Holly? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's like the other thing when John puts bids out for whatever or drainage and nobody bids on it. I mean the point is if you put the bid out there, who's gonna bid on it? Right. Yep. We're not gonna get any others than that one. Yep. So and, and I'll be completely transparent and fair on this. Are there other companies that can do this? Yes. I mean, there's other companies, and when I say that, I'm talking about manufacturers. You know, there's HP, there's uh, Pure, there's others out there that do this. But the one thing that we have found with Dell EMC is, A, we have a good relationship with them. We've pretty much been a Dell EMC shop for years. And then B, the support and the service that we get from them when we do need something from them as long as been there. So, and we're familiar with it. It's not learning a, a, a new interface or anything. Well, it just boils down to something you can write the specs for. Mm -hmm. And whoever can bid it can bid it, but it's, you need this equipment. Right, exactly. So it's like a dump truck. Yeah. You, you just right. spec it out, and whoever can bid it bids it. Mm -hmm. Usually there's one person who can do it. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Just get that for it. We'll do. All right. All right. Thank you, Josh. Thank, Thank you, Thank you. Okay, we've got Gail. I have a few things tonight. Sorry, I'm not going to be quick. Okay. Uh, uh, you're fine. Uh, Take as much time as you need. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody's seen my reports that I gave you last week. I'm just going to go over a few of those things. So, uh, met with Congress Rudyman's office, uh, Rudy's office actually. Um, you all know we're um, getting ready to schedule that meeting. Kelly did contact me tonight, and if you think of anything um, or who you want to be on that uh, private meeting, they would like to know that. Um, so, if you guys can look at that or think about that, I can email her tomorrow and they can set up a meeting in reference to uh, the at t issue. So we will go face to face with them. And my recommendation is we ask um, uh, possibly Joe McCarter as well as part of our TC that try to help us uh, and some of your state elected officials that uh, help us represent our uh, cause in the matter so they have the right to speak on behalf if somebody asks them how this uh, turned out in the long time process. So we want to make it positive as far as the interoperability 
and how things move forward in a positive way and more streamlined than what it has been running. And so, truthfully, I don't think there are any changes, but uh, when we sit at the table, we'll see what kind of changes or positive things that have been made. Mm -hmm. So it she should wanted that in Indianapolis, is that correct? That is correct. So if you guys can think on that within the next uh, 12 hours, get with me and I will send you a list so we can get that on the books, um, if you could. So Shuffler's Electric, they are um, waiting on a few things. Uh, Carrie from ERS was on vacation. Uh, they need a few clamps that they're looking for and they'll finish that up. But you have a couple additional appropriations. May not go through this time, but next time, in reference to, I believe that is the final grabbing, <laughs> you, you know, and in those contracts for the jail contract, if you've seen in there, there was a, um, I don't want to call it hold harmless, but there was a segment in there, um, I think it was like 10000 or something that was at the end of their contract in the big package. So I didn't see that, neither did um, Shufflers and we, we were going over things just to make sure and we did and that was down. So I do apologize on that. Um, let's see. Also, I contacted you last week. Um, obviously, we were in a meeting as well. The FAA has been contacted and um, we'll move forward accordingly. The numbers <coughs> are there in case anything happens or any accidents. So uh, that was reported right away. Your EMPG grant for reimbursement is on, uh, I'm on the second thing, I've passed that. Now all I have to implement is our timesheets and so forth, and that grant application will be completed. So we'll get that in um, like this week or the beginning of next, and that will be executed for half of our wages or up to 18,000. So that has been accomplished. So July 6th um, from 10 to 1, uh, we want to invite our community stakeholders, uh, like the sheriff, like law enforcement, so the city, the mayor, you guys. Um, and this is in reference to the tornadoes that hit <coughs> southern Indiana. So Homeland Security is going to go, come up and see what that uh, mitigation looked like and um, how they were able to clean up and as a government official or help from the public. How did that look? How did that work? in cleaning up a total town that was uh, devastated. It's happened a couple times in the state of Indiana, so they're gonna be up and give their outlook of what happened. So it'd be greatly appreciated if you know we had a conglomerate of um, elected officials and ask IDHS questions, how or what we do and when something like that occurs. So we wanna be prepared for that, and y'all have IPSC here as well. So they'll go over the communications that they brought down in, or the towers and stuff, which we have portable towers here. Um, we're a little bit more advanced in some areas just by what we've done in the past and as a district. But it gives a whole uh, overlook of what happens in a disaster like that and how to be prepared and what the you know, trials that they had um, in there. July 6th, where at, what time? Uh, it's going to be at the Forensic Center. Um, so at the jail? Yep, yeah, July 6th from 10 to 1. Uh, the community, like if you're in the community, like Trent, you're invited as well. Michael Ladd, you're invited because obviously it affects businesses. So you'll see me go out and about if I haven't seen your personal email or I may tell you two or three times, you're like, Gail, I got it, I'll be there, you know, and we'll go from there. But, um, we're just trying to hit everybody, and I apologize if I don't get you, but uh, please, you're all welcome to come. We just need a help the head count because there will be lunch provided. Uh, I will say this Farm Bureau has been gracious enough to do support a lot of our causes, so um, and OAPC, it needs to be voted on to pay for that lunch, so we need, um, we need, we do need a head count for that. So moving forward, um, August 9th, our OEPC group, Tony Pastor Lucy, and uh, I believe it's Sunoco has put together a meeting for a lunch and learn what LEPC does for the community and what EME does. So it'll be Q and A. They will also have lunch there, pizza, and that's from 11 to 1, um, August the 9th. So that's the other day, and then on. Uh, 
Let's see. I think that's all the dates I need to give you for EMA. Um, I will tell you when we do our um, salary grants on a quarter or half through the year when we implement our EMPG grant, they need a county plan. So with that being said, um, you're going to see more community outreach and a county plan to help oversee major disasters that help within the community. So we're going to get that community outreach and get that plan on the table, and that's going to be the major plan for um, our EMPG grant because it's highly needed here because we're going to, it'll be a community effort to regain some of those losses. Do you guys have any questions on that? Okay, then lastly for 911, you guys were given a quote. So the Senate bill came out, right? I've talked to you about it numerous times. With that uh, being said, uh, this will come out in 911 funds. So you see we utilize Priority Dispatch or the International Academy of EMD for EMS already. <clears throat> so with that being said, I asked for a quote because we do have to have certifications within the other entities of the resources we utilize. Right now we just have it for EMD, and we have policies in place for regular calls that come in for fire and law. Well, now we need the guts, we need the meat and potatoes. That house bill states that some of my employees will need a 40 hour uh, pre-basic class, some of us have already had it, no big deal, but that training some of that training is allocated through the state of Indiana. So that 8,000 and some that I listed in the email, uh, the state will pay that out of the quote. So you're gonna see me bring that up. I will also bring it up to our advisory board and send that out, but uh, we need to move on that and get that implemented. So if you're in agreement for that, this is a program that we already utilize, and I really don't wanna use a hodgepodge of programs into one entity that our Spillman uh, CAD integrates with our priority dispatch. So that's one less thing that we have to spend versus another system to incorporate a cheaper version of whatever is out there. So that's why you got that before you today. Is that we're all in agreement, it's okay. Yeah. Move ahead. Uh, like okay. Push up. Yeah. 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 okay. Fantastic. And then you have the um, SOPs from the state that I gave you in reference to that. So if there's any questions um, on that. And that is basically all for 911 EMA. Okay. You good with that? Do you have an EMS yep. meeting? Yeah, that's my Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so EMS, so uh, community, community outreach for EMS. Um, what was that, the 28th? Let's get that. Uh, time for right? Yeah, I think it was 28. 28 down at Grass Creek yeah. at 6.30 p.m. Um, we'll be at the fire station. As a community outreach, I have tried to reach out to uh, Kiwana Library as well, so we can post that on the uh, board down there. But this will give your public um, a chance to speak on what they would like to see with our Fulton County EMS. July 20th at 6 p.m. at the Akron Community. Um, we will have to pay for that uh, building rental there. So uh, Rebecca Hartzler, Clerk Treasurer, has started advertising that um, as a public meeting on the east side. What time is that 6.30 also? No, that's 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Yeah. There are no rebels over there. They want an extra half hour. Wow. Yeah. So. That's good. Um, yeah, so they would like that to start at 6 o'clock over there. And then wherever you, else you guys want to meet, I believe the schools want to meet on the July 20th as well. They're going to meet before that then? Or? I'm not for sure unless they come to the Akron meeting. Okay. So, um, Valley will probably come to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's really been good. Blaine has uh, been to a lot of our EMS board meetings or our EMS meetings in general. So. And that's all I have for that. Any other questions for EMS? I think everything was sent. So the next one I need to clock out, I do apologize. <coughs> so the next one, if you don't have any other questions on, on my stuff or 
a regular county employee, I need to move forward with the other. Okay. Okay, Jerry Good is unable to be here. I am her, uh, and neither is her chief deputy, so I am the next in line. And there is a couple of things that presented. I will tell you our forensic van um, needs a few batteries. Uh, I know we've talked to you, Rick. I'm not going to get the terminology correct because I don't have it right in front of you at the moment. Um, but you'll see that come across, I believe. Basically, a long story short, you. she got the new cop, and the new cop plugged in. She goes to get in her van, and it's dead. Yeah. So she goes the other morning, she got called out at 4 o'clock in the morning, and her van was dead. So, right. so basically, it'll take a, a, a battery maintainer, and I'm forgetting Gail's got the list of a battery maintainer and some stuff to maintain so that her battery ain't dead. I think the bill was sixteen hundred. That's exactly. Yep. So you can take that and pass it around. Jerry did sign it. If you approve it today, she would like a blessing on that. Sixteen thirty. She does have the money in her equipment fund to do that. So she would like to move forward with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. That should solve the problem with the forensic van. Yeah, you gotta have the van to go to get it. She's just leaving her van there, and we are able to go get her van if needed at that point. Um, she's got it in her fund. She just wanted uh, your blessing on it. It's already in there. Let's, there was a Let's approve it that way. Yeah, yeah. So on your 10 motion to approve the crossroad ambulance sales, uh, the battery charger, and $1,630. So Second. All in favor? Motion carries through. Ms. Bryant's got to sign that. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing on the list, uh, we have been consulting with Holly, uh, the county attorney, and obviously the commissioners. Uh, I haven't been privileged to all the conversations with Jerry, but I'm presenting it as what I've been involved with. And I have clocked out. I just want to say as the community servant and what I do, I clock out a lot to do anything I do, but I never clock in when I get called out at 9, 10, 11, 2, 3, whatever time it is, I never clock in and I never clock out. So that it's free time I need the county as a 9-1 EMA or whatever I need to do on behalf of the citizens of Fulton County, just doing it. So i never been nitpicked before, but now I'm being nitpicked. So when it comes to the deputy coroner's end of it. Um, I will tell you as I clocked out today and Jerry called me with a cry for help, I did clock out, but I did um, answer to Aaron Gearhart over at Akron because he had an emergency question. And I also responded to an email to set up for a meeting on my regular job duties being clocked out. So I do not go over um, extended on hours on a deputy coroner's end, I will tell you that. You put a lot of your own time in on That is correct. Um, but I can't yeah. start clocking in and clocking out any minute of the hour or day that I get called out. And I have to say this by Monday, probably not going to come to work. <laughs> so um, in regards to that, so we uh, develop a contract. Um, some of the legal things that I learned when I went to investigative school, I ran that by that through Holly. She uh, removed, reviewed it and approved it. Uh, we did correct the things uh, that was noted by the commissioners uh, that was created or corrected. Holly did review that as well. Um, all the um, deputies have signed this again. So Holly, I'm going to pass that to you so that's first. The that's okay. the newest one that is signed by everybody. And then um, I believe Jerry <coughs> sent you the Fulton County Deputy Coroner's contract or Coroner's Cost of Services. Um, and here it is again. You got to find we'll it present again. it again. Did you send that today? Was that today or was it last night? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah. She might have said, I think she might have said, I know we're good. Oh, these are all the right ones. But these ain't the call, though. No, she's going to call this. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
she uh, labeled like uh, on the monthly or quarterly how she was labeling them. We both did speak to state board of accounts on this um, issue itself. Uh, speaking with you guys, you advised us just to uh, put the dates of service on there. So being a bit confused, Jerry said that she would back it up to 6-1, but we're going into uh, July, so in, uh, she can't do it this week because we all have um, our educated services. Um, she can do whatever you suggest, or um, I just need to know the uh, correct law on contract services when I do contract services on many other entities. I am not hourly connected by or you know scrutinized about whatever minute I'm doing. And I will tell you, when you do an autopsy, I mean, a lot of times we beat those hours. We're gone for six hours, just depending on the case. If it's a child, it's worse. And we'd be glad to entertain anybody that wants to understand our job to come along with us and realize that. Because when you start breaking it out in a minute or an hourly basis, it's a dollar twenty-five, and I don't. I mean, to me, that's a slap in the face. If we put it out in our whole hour, please look at that, understand what it's doing, um, or what we're doing, which you can't until you do the job itself. Um, there's a lot of paperwork, and since COVID-19, it's increased, and there's a lot of safety hazards that also go along with that and cleanup that we have to do on our end. So it is extensive. A lot of times we eat that and we don't put that down. So whatever Jerry wants to work with or has us do, we um, either donate our time or try to work within the budget. But I will tell you, nickel and diamond are going in the budget. You're not staying within the budget. You see what I'm saying? You're, we're gonna have to transfer money to here and there because you never know in emergency services, it's like flipping a coin. You can't put an hour on it, you can't put this or this thing. We can put the day, we can put the time, she has it down to the hour if needed in each case, and what review is. So any questions or answers that we can give you, we'll gladly get, we'll gladly review the case with you, and so forth. But at this point in time, we have exhausted uh, what we need to do on contracts. We've signed them every time that we want to change and go through that. So if you can just tell us what we need to do, uh, my suggestion moving forward for next year is making us employees and just do it. I mean, it saves us a lot of headache. We don't have time to keep doing this. Yeah. I don't have time it's, to clock out numerous times during the day or at night to make sure this happens when we got other things um, on the table. I know it's not right. You guys haven't been paid since first year for the duty served. And I know we looked at that. I redid it with Jerry a couple times. Uh, we ran it by Holly. And compared it, uh, I think you know we signed the claims payers, which just list they list like <coughs> the service, what the job was, and the grand total, to where you get the contract amounts in here, the different fees. You know, I don't think we need to see itemized bills coming in. We need just the uh, total for the services done. You guys have done a fantastic job. Uh, I think all these concurred with what we've seen. Isn't that right? yeah. Yes, and we had it in there with the statutes, the contract. We redid it. We made a request that we state how much we charge for certain things, whether you transport or attend a scene or whatever. So all of that information is on there. So I will ask this, your other contract services, I'd like to see your contract services and if they put every minute, every five minutes, or every half hour or so hour on the table. Because um, just because I'm a county employee, I'm doing work on my own time. So you do not look at me as a county employee when I do uh, work on a contract services time. Yeah, that's why I say the others we do not. So uh, we will to see, keep this, yeah, what's been presented looks good. And uh, so if you can tell Jerry how she needs to do the claims, but we have one, uh, I know one of our chief deputies, this is like, she depends on that, like the rest of us do, but um, we need payment for services. That's what we claims? need. You got the claims? Okay. You, you got the claims? Jerry, got the claims? Jerry emailed those. I have a copy of them here. Um, I believe Chantal responded back today. There's still some things needed on the claim for us. Um, Holly, I forwarded you that email and you were not on it to review that. 
I like to like comment on that. So. Jerry said she would back it up to the 1st of June, and maybe she will submit a claim um, next week for things moving forward. Um, I mean, we had two okay. death calls last night, this so. Is this the one from today, Gail? I got it on my computer if you need it. June 19th, that's today. Yes. Okay, so she still wanted. She wanted it more itemized to see how we got to the $900, to see how you got to the $900. Uh, indicating there are no dates attached to it or times. She said she cannot prepay someone to June 30th, which we backed out. We right. backed that out, so yep, she's not doing that. Um, she indicated that each call out needed to have a specific date and time frame for the job they were doing. Now, I guess my question is, Christina, was it done this way always in the past? I mean, I've been here four years, and this is the first time. Mm -hmm. No, the State Board of Accounts had just pulled the claim because Gail specifically is a county employee. They wanted to make sure that she wasn't on the clock while she's doing coroner duties. It doesn't matter for the other two because they're not also county employees. So this only pertains to Gail? It would, it would pertain to any county employee that was doing that job. Okay. Is there a law that can I see that law? So, specifically a time clock indicating she's clocked out is not good enough? Well, we don't know when she's performing the coroner duties. Do you want, which? So a county employee on her own is different than a private contractor turning in a thing. Right. Because at the moment she's a private contractor. Yes. But I cannot clock yes, in yes. the time clock. Right. So. State Board of Accounts is saying, how am I verifying that you're not on the clock while you're doing deputy so, coroner duties? So who do I need to call at 1.30, whatever hour of the day? Who do I need to call to how I can call her? Yeah. How does she document that? And that's an emergency Just call, so has to go immediately. On the invoice itself, if she has a date and a time on there to cross-reference with her payroll records. The State Board of Accounts exit interview is on Thursday. So I'm sure they would go over it with you. What's on Thursday? The exit interview with State Board of Council for the audit. But Holly, you're a county employee, right? She's no, she is an independent contractor. Okay. But she's sitting here today, right? She's not also an employee. It's true, I'm not a county employee. Oh, I'm just lucky you. A contractor, yeah. As a public defender, also. I. So Kristen, note that I was clocked out and worked 15 minutes of keeping clock. So Gail's the only one you got the problem with. Just if it were any county employee, it would have the same issue. So was she to clock in every time, the, like today, <clears throat> she took those two calls? Is she supposed to clock in? She, can't, no. she can't clock in. She's not working as an employee in no. that capacity. No, well, that's, that's, not, that's not the question. Okay. Okay. The question is, on well, Gail's invoice, from what I'm hearing you say, she needs to say at 1, 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. I got a call out to, is that what you're saying? Just I mean, a date and a time that just she's a date performing coroner functions. That's what Jerry's got that. She's got she's all that. She's got it. She so was just making, needs to be on She the, was making me equal place. like everybody else because I guess if I were part-time someplace else. I see that she got a lot of Or if I did jail work for Travis. I mean. So we can approve and pay everything but Gail's as soon as she gives you the numbers for Gail's the, the actual time, you can pay Gail. Is that correct? I haven't even certified those claims for payment yet. We just received them today. But we had them last month, or yeah, last week. We've had, we've had these totals in for three, four weeks. She submitted different ones today, I believe. That's because you kept requiring something to change. Well, my Everything. audit required a different, yeah. But every every two weeks we get something different. Something else gets changed. This has been going I've, on. I've been long. asking for the same thing for three or four years. Nothing has changed. We have to enforce what we've been asking for for the last three or four years because State Board of Accounts does not have the contract we have on file. 
Yeah. But Christina, didn't you write the last two contracts that we Absolutely signed? Absolutely did not write it. Jerry sat with Don, and then she had to white out what you did. I, I gave her a sample template, and I said, here's an example of something you can use. I didn't write anything. Where are we at, honey? You want to say something? Are you, did you want to say something, or are you just shaking your head? Okay, so, so are we hearing that the next invoice that Gail submits needs to have the date and time of the call out? I mean, just when she's called out, not, not how many minutes she was there or anything like that, just the, the 1 a.m., whatever it was, and on that date. Is that what I'm hearing? That's what you're hearing. And you said Jerry has that. Jerry has it. Okay. Okay. But if that's still an issue with prorating an hourly wage, then perhaps the contract should cover it differently than doing it and broken down by now. Why are you just independent contractors, when we get a drainage claim, it just says project done, project 40% paid, project 20% paid. We don't have the hours that anybody spends on back over I'm just telling you, the, con the contract that was turned in has an hourly wage, which means I'm going to have to audit it for the hours worked. But every one of these calls are different. You may spend an hour with family, you may spend five hours with wage family. And just replacing it with a flat fee for that service rendered. That That's what we did initially, but you did not have that. There was no service costs in the original contract at all. Yeah, at the bottom of the contract yeah. that Jerry yes, presented last week, I that was one lump sum amount. It doesn't say, I cannot audit a claim if there's no reference as to what service you performed. That's what I've been asking for. We service the citizens of Fulton County. We pick up dead people. What, what more do you want? I'll send you a couple examples from another county. Maybe that will be helpful. But we've been doing this for a month, and the people have not been paid. We've been doing this for five months since first of year. Okay. And people are needing their money. And but people did, need to be paid. did I hear that there's going to be a problem, Gail, breaking down the hourly amount? You didn't. You just said that. It, making it an hourly amount doesn't make sense because you're not going to break down the hours. We, we broke down the hours. So Chantel was saying that if I if I did an hour and a half, we needed to prorate it and cut it um, and do like $20 an hour. Because the contract says per hour. Did anyone say so? No. Okay. But if we submit a contract. Does the list of services not say per $40 per hour? The deputy yearly distribution shall be, but not limited to, $5,000. Quarterly, March, June, September, and December, it gives them out of $1,250. We try to keep it within the budget. By going through every little thing, we can't keep it within the budget because we're, we're you're asking us to put every little thing we do down. <coughs> so I'm not now, asking to put everything in the budget. Um, it's going it, to have to be listed in the contract. The page that was sent last night at 8.30 last night or whatever, with the list of services. That is what I asked for. But you're saying that the hourly wage is not gonna work for you. So I'm asking why there's an hourly wage, why are you presenting it with an hourly rate if that's not gonna work for you? I'm referring to Chantel's email where she wanted it. Uh, we, could do, we, we could do an hourly rate on certain uh, services that we're doing within the contract. It's stated multiple times, 40 hours. So when it goes to the education, we, we do 40 hours on there. If we want to break it down by a minute or an hourly, we are actually making $1.25 an hour, which to me, if you look at the lump sum, it's better. Because she's going to blow her, the corner's budget to the water. They start charging hourly wages. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you that list of services suggested that they get an hourly wage. But that's what you wanted on there was a list of services. A list of to know what those services were costing us. Yeah, I suggested maybe just buy transport. A transport is $100 or um, attending a coroner's call is $50, something along those lines. I didn't pick the hourly wage. They did. And now she's saying that the hourly wage isn't practical. On some things, it is not practical. It, it isn't because when you go on these calls, Anytime you're in emergency services, and Travis can probably verify that as well from the sheriff's department, some calls may expect to take 15, 20 minutes, and it takes four, three, four hours. Others take, you expect a long time, and you're in and out and done. 
I'm not arguing whether or not it's practical. I'm saying if the contract says it's going to be an amount of money per hour, then we're going to have to know what hours so that we can audit the claim to make sure that what they've turned in coincides with the contract. If they if they don't want to turn in hours, then I suggest they take out the hourly rate. Well, the contract that's right here doesn't have an hourly rate rate on it. It just says shall not be limited to and be paid quarterly at twelve hundred fifty dollars and seventeen hundred and fifty dollars each quarter. So every quarter they got a flat fee for they doing whatever she needed them to do. So I asked for rates in the contract, and rates were emailed last night that there's an hourly wage associated. Why do we need rates? Why do we need rates? <laughs> you just told us we didn't need rates, and now you tell us we do need rates. I didn't say you didn't need rates. Yeah, but why why do you need the hourly rate? I don't need an hourly rate. I need a rate for service. That's it. It doesn't okay, matter so whether we'll it's hourly, hourly or not, but if you're going to put that it's hourly, then I'll need to know the hours so that we can still audit the claim. She doesn't need an hourly rate, but she still needs the hours. Not if you don't put an hourly rate, but you're saying that you, you don't want to keep hours work because you don't want it prorated. Okay, but you still want her hours. Her hours have to be on there because she's an employee. So we have to make sure that she's not doing corner work while she's clocked in for normal one. So everything's a okay to say for Gail's part of it. I apologize to the citizen of Fulton County because this, this is a joke. Okay, so no hourly rate, take that out of the contract. Is that in that contract? Well, that's that's what works better for her. I, was she not it's in the, the, it's in the <laughs> piece of paper that's not attached to the contract. But that's it's in the piece of paper. This it's is not, not attached to the that's contract. That's what I need in the contract Correct. is the rate, whether it's hourly or not. If you want to go hourly, then you have to put your hours in there. If you don't want to go hourly, then just make it. Well, so what is this piece of paper? That's not even that's nobody signed. The, that was from Jerry last night. They told okay. Me. So trying to push everything down. down. So okay. we don't need this. That is what I need. Mean. No, it says hour. There's hour. So she, she, that's the breakdown that she, I'm hearing she needs, but. If you put it out, a call out is 60 bucks or whatever, instead of an hourly rate. That, that's where we're getting into trouble, I think, is the hourly rate, from what I'm hearing. From what she, Christine is saying, that with the state board accounts is... It's not a problem for case. me. Gail said that she doesn't want to track the hours, right? You don't want to prorate down if it's an hour and a half. If you don't want to prorate it down, then I'm saying that you probably don't want an hourly rate in the contract, just a flat fee for the service. I don't care how many hours it takes. We'll just put a damn service fee on it. Okay. So I really don't. And I work above and beyond anyway. So the meeting said forty dollars per hour. You don't want that. I don't care whether or not it says well, that. Well you're saying the state she will have to put yes. She will have to put an amount of hours then if you want an hour. So she attack. should just not put anything on here for these specific things? She'll have to have a rate of some sort, whether it's just a flat rate for going to a call or whatever, that's fine. But if you don't want to include hours on the claim, then remove the hourly fee and make it a flat, a flat fee. Yes. You, you got to tell me what you want. So all of these hourly rates need to come off. Okay. If I'm understanding Gail correctly, that would work better so that they don't have to track hours. So just charge well, for service I don't, I don't instead really, of $40 an hour. I don't, I don't really care what, I want to know what the State Board of Accounts is telling us to do. They want me to be able to audit the claim. So if the claim says that there was an hour and a half performed, then they're going to have to prorate it at $40 an hour. So it would be $60. Why we if it's just there? a flat fee, then she just needs to put in there how many call-outs she did at $60 per hour. She did two, she gets $120. I just need numbers so, in there that are auditable. So if we take the forty dollars an hour off, why do we have to turn hours in? If there's no she hours in there. Specifically, in. so she's not performing double duties on the clock. Only. But that doesn't have to have an hourly rate. If all you want is Gail was here for an hour and a half. Period. Right. Mm -hmm. From this time to okay. this time. Is what she's going to have to that regardless. But that's got nothing to do with the rates in a contract. Okay. We're, 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 we're past, we're, we're frustrated. Let me, I'm going to sell Christina, but I'll call State Board of Accounts. Okay. And I'm going to get exactly what we need, what okay. they want to see. Okay. And then we're going we're gonna to get the resolved okay. here. And she um, said there was an exit interview this Thursday? Yeah. Thursday. The, yeah, State Board of Accounts, is gonna, we're going to go through their findings with the county. Okay. The Can the county attorney be at that? Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. really okay. 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 
this Thursday? I think it was about 1 o'clock. Is that what it was? It wasn't a wonder that they tried to move it up. Rewind. Were you and I supposed to be here before 1? Do. Do. I got an email. I'm so sorry. I need to go with two days. I think I'm supposed to be here. Okay. So but you're going to go ahead and call anyway. They can be on. I'll, we'll try to clear something out of that. Yeah. Because I do have a question on this also. So, that's right. Okay. We're, with the commissioners and the county attorney here, I need to know when we're going to be paid. I mean, if you can, if you have an executive meeting and agree to amount, it needs to be paid so Jerry can get it. We do have one uh, deputy that depends on it. I can't make a decision in an executive meeting. It has to be in a public meeting. Well, can you make it today? After Thursday, I'll promise you this, Gail. After Thursday, when Brian figures out what we need, well, okay, and we get it figured out, we will call, we need 48 hours to call commissioner's meeting. We'll call, if, if I'm a, Speaking out of turn, let me know. We'll call a commissioner's meeting and get it get it taken care of. That's that's the best I can offer you. Yeah, and you can I'll let Jerry know. Okay. Thanks, Gail. We greatly appreciate the service of you and your right. and your deputy deputies. Thank you. Well, I have. Thank you. It's a, it's a job not having anybody here once. Okay. Um, <laughs> Travis, I'm sure. Right here. <laughs> I told you no first, Travis. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot, and I talk real quick. So. <laughs> you guys got the uh, reports that I emailed out. I assume any questions or anything on those questions report about the report. Looks good. <clears throat> um, the uh, vehicle locators. We've been working with Stillman and Josh. Those going. We've been testing some things, getting some things lined up. So. Hopefully, I'm hopeful here in the next couple of weeks we'll have those rocking and rolling. Um, we had 58 inmates in this afternoon when I checked. Um, we got the uh, contract back from the U.S. Marshal Services last week. I sent, I apologize, I sent it to Brian and Holly right before the meeting. I didn't have your guys' email on my phone, so we're going to be. Um, the contract amount is $75 per inmate per day, and then $35 an hour for transports. Um, so, um, it's definitely well above and beyond what, what it's going to cost us to and have. that's up to 50, am I remembering right? Up to 50 inmates. They're not going to need here. That's <coughs> if they haven't called with them. Okay. Yet, but okay. we've obviously had room for them, so. Um, we had to get some training complete for jail staff to be able to complete transports. Um, they have to be firearms qualified and certified, so Larry and Matt Utter's been, Larry Jolly and Matt Utter's been working with them. We're getting some jailers qualified for that, so. Um, we're, we're excited about that. I think it's going to generate a uh, substantial amount of revenue coming back into the bonds to be able to put the order, based on the ordinance and be able to put the bonds to get them paid back or paid down. Um, I guess my next one is part time deputy. Um, when Sheriff Sailors uh, retired at the first of the year, I thought we came in here and requested um, that he be brought back in as a part time deputy. Um, to fill in, I found out since then that it hasn't been. We got the position approved through the, through the council to have another part-time position um, with the same amount of money, but we didn't, I guess, ask for that. So I guess I'm asking for that to bring uh, retired sheriff sailors back as a part-time deputy. Is there, is there any specific hours? I mean, is he going to be working any certain hours, or is that just? It's going to be as needed. Um, I don't see him working a whole lot of hours based off of his uh, based off of his commitments now. But uh, it does allow him to keep his law enforcement certifications up by being part time. Um, we're able to keep his annual training up um, to be able to keep his law enforcement hours up. So yeah, I guess I don't have a, a problem with it as long as he's yeah, it'll be a uh, it'll be a minimum uh, investment into him. He's got obviously all the training now. Um, he's got the uniforms. He's got you know all the the, the holistic vest. I mean, every, so that, I mean, as far as us investing into him as a as an agency or as a county, I mean, we're gonna have a very minimal investment into him. So okay, I mean, he's a former employee. 
employee, technically elected official, but uh, I guess Travis does have to, to bring the assembly back in to employment. Commissioners have to prove that. So I'm assuming he left in good standing. So. He did. He did. <laughs> yes. So I'd entertain a motion to um, let Travis retire former Sheriff Sailors as a part time employee as needed. So <coughs> Second. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, I emailed everybody. He's going to pay for great job. Yeah, he'll stop do that. And I'll let him know that. Um, I emailed everybody last week about the uh, uh, jail chemical addiction or JCAP program. We're going to be starting in the jail. We've been working behind the scenes on that since uh, I took office in January. Um, basically, several other counties um, in the state have utilized this program. It's a, a variation of different programs, but it's. It's basically a re recovery program with developing life, life skills and mentorship. So you're gonna have um, your AA classes, you're gonna have some of your recovery classes, but you're also gonna have anger management or banking finance, things like that, um, to be able to have some of these life skills when they come back out in the community. Um, we're looking at a 12-week program, um, at least the initial the initial first program is gonna be, it's gonna start in July um, with graduation in October. I've uh, been working with the auditor's office to get an account set up. We've already received a grant um, of $3,000. Um, and we've had a lot of public requests. How do I donate into the program? What can I do to help? So um, I really foresee that it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be any issues at all um, being funded. However, I've got to figure out how to get the money to where it needs to go so we can get it back out. So I've been working with them. Um, seems to be moving along. So. Um, so far, it's uh, funded entirely by donations, grant, and volunteers. I don't see that ever changing. Um, I think that's going to be 100% uh, funded that way. Um, we had service provider training last week. We had uh, probably 25 members of the public, um, anywhere from bankers to uh, Fort County to um, insurance providers, just all kinds of different people. I mean, everybody's invested into this because everybody knows somebody or has dealt with, with addiction or recovery. Um, so it, it's definitely a community investment. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, any questions on that program? I'm trying to keep it brief here. 200 West and Olson Road, we've been having issues with parking again. You guys did the ordinance back in August. I had the guys go out this weekend and write some uh, ordinance violations. So uh, hopefully, I think it's gonna be the same three or four people that are causing issues out there. Hopefully they'll get the hint. And if not, they'll find their vehicle missing when they get off the river. So, um, but it is, and, and you're absolutely right. I mean, they are, they're parking in between the sign and down. I mean, it's just, it's way you can't, get you can't get across the bridge. And it's so far, even the single lane, it's so far when they get it congested on both sides that it's just not a good thing. So, um, but the guys are out there, they're aware of, of the issues out there. The guys are out there working those on the weekends. So, any questions for me? Thank you, <laughs> we don't need work with confidence. Yeah. <laughs> At least I have witnesses, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, did I miss any county department head? Okay, we have uh, Michael, did you spend a Yeah. I'll keep it real quick. Uh, Mike um, I'll start with the housing study right now. There's a meeting. Uh, Wednesday, uh, with the market potential analysis results, it'll tell you um, what the uh, uh, market so far looks like. It will study. There's still a lot of work to go. Everything I gave you guys this, I'll give the council this tomorrow night. If you look there at the, on that last page, that tells you exactly where we are in the process. We're just a little bit short of halfway through the whole process and everything. Um, August 14th, there's no time set, and I'm not going to guarantee that date, um, but there's a housing symposium proposed for right now that um, that will be a public meeting where all the um, uh, results to date will be explained to the public whatnot. Uh, we put together what we think is a pretty good um, um, communications process where um, not only will I be writing newspaper columns now, I guess I'll do a radio show. <laughs> I don't know how, but we'll get it. Uh, there's, uh, we had a, about an hour and a half meeting a couple of weeks ago, and it was uh, full court press. There's going to be press releases, there's uh, meetings, articles, radio, television, we're 
trying to figure out how to get that in, involved. Um, so, I mean, these reports, I suspect starting next month will be a, a lot more detailed than they have been today and everything, but things are now gearing up. And then um, there was a meeting on the 5th of June out at Blacker Park, and the industrial park will be finished this summer. <coughs> Um, I know you guys are familiar with it. You know where the road kind of stops and it gets to be bad again and everything. That's all going to be paved all the way around to the U-turn, the whole thing, the lot, everything will be done. All, everything. Um, Dan Holtz right now has decided he's going to put two LP tanks in rather than wait for everything. He wants to go ahead and get himself finished as quick as possible. So. Right now, that's it. You've got, I gave you some, a sheet of other stuff that I had done, but I'm not going to go into all that. Um, the one last thing I'll say is I was out at Pipe Lumber uh, a couple of weeks ago talking to them, and Craig is upset about the condition of Route 14. Mm -hmm. And um, like so I got him in touch with state people, our representatives and senators are now involved in it. Um, what Craig wants is he wants the whole road torn down and the whole brand new road put in. And right now, all that they're planning to do is chip and seal. Yeah. So that's you know just three of the projects that are going on. There's you can do the rest of it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Bridge certification. Uh, county name is Fulton, number of covered bridges uh, per Indiana Code 8 14 1 10 is zero. We, the county commissioners of Fulton County, hereby certify that the aforementioned is a true number of covered bridges within the said county's road system per Indiana Code 8 14 1 10 for the calendar year of 2023. Okay. Did you agree with that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and here's your motion to uh, approve the certification, the public certification. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay, we have. Uh, Minutes. You guys have a chance to look them over. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. We have uh, Monday, June fifth, and Monday, June twelfth. Any corrections? I didn't see any. Okay. It looks good. I do have any wish to approve the minutes for June fifth and June twelfth. So moved. Second. All favor? Motion carries three. Occasionally, uh, Blackheader, the complex was looking for some help with some uh, grading and gravel before the opening day. The highway department went out there and did some grading and the material to do it, so the board um, agreed to pay for the material. Their board, not ours. Their, their board, the, the Blackheader board. So uh, we do that in culverts and whatnot. So that bill will go to them. Uh, they will send a check to cook the gravel on their own. Can you do that before we get to it? I mean, do you know what it's like? Nine hundred eighty some bucks, something like that. Seven hundred. Or seven hundred. Yeah, you know, right. seven hundred. Seven dollars. Okay. So right at the moment, we have the insurance claims for three hundred insurance claims. 
for the disbursement from 511 to 517 for $33,321.53. We have the insurance claim docket for the disbursements from 518 to $524 of $8,055.94. We have the insurance claim uh, disbursements for 525 to 531, $10,672.32. We have insurance claim docket for the June fees of $43,378.26. We have a payroll docket. Payroll date is uh, 6 16 23 for $267,347.29 with a payroll deduction of $115,115.54. We have the Spring 23 settlement, $15,306,729.00. We have the um, pit distribution spring of 23, $86,553.18. We have the uh, CBET distribution for spring of 23 is $77,622. Fines and fees for the, tre the Treasurer of State of uh, $1,256,662.11. And then the PTRC for the Treasurer of Polk County for $1,041,172. And we have it's a sup the lit supplemental. This is a lit distribution. For $733,015.09. Utilities, $10,438.09. We have the miscellaneous claims. Do you have that correct amount? Mm -hmm. $1,403,281.79. That's deducting the $782.04 for cooking and grandma. Transfer request uh, from the courthouse uh, from County General, uh, part time, $28,000. Uh, it's for the director, it's for maintenance director wages. <coughs> we have uh, transfer the commissioners, uh, consultant fee, it's a contract to pay for our bond for the 
courthouse ceiling demo and replacement of $9,456. Area of form for title. Down the floor. Yeah. Got some ceiling falling on us. We have uh, the vacant administration building, kind of general. It's equipment repair to a building repair of $11,060. Was that intended to fix the water damage? Is that why, why that was, you know, why that was brought? Is um, that what he done that for? Well, there's not an explanation on this. It's from okay. equipment repair okay. to the building and repair maintenance, so it's probably the... The highway maintenance and repair um, by two of us, uh, mixed aggregate of $593,000. That's the ones that that's we're not going to do, correct, John? Oh, right. Right. Yeah. And there's, some, I think there's well, another one in there. We got the um, bridge 32, bridge yep. 50. Do we want to do that one? Yeah. Shifting ten thousand dollars, shifting eleven thousand eight hundred eighty-five dollars from the network administrator to uh, the maintenance budget. Yeah, uh, the maintenance away from the IT director. An additional appropriation request. An appropriation request to the courthouse uh, to fund the maintenance director position. Seventeen thousand eighty dollars. Is that for Perf and the other stuff? Is yeah, that's that Perf, Health, and Hawaii. It's just a, trying to clean that up, get that back to where you it. Okay. You guys have any? I guess this is kind of like this. I guess we have uh, a contract renewal. They're up. July 1st for TP Mechanical. Uh, we've got the courthouse, we've got the annex building, we've got the probation building. Uh, these are the same costs as they were last year. We have the option about one, two, or three years. So so I take it Kerry's got them in his budget just like we had before, it just carries over to Kerry's budget. Is that correct? Yeah. So that money's there, it's just Yeah, it's there. Okay. It will be in his budget. Okay. 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 Um, so the uh, Courthouse, an annual uh, agreement is nine thousand two hundred and eleven dollars. So, then we'll do all three of these. We have the annex building. Um, for, we'll do one year. Is that correct? You guys will do one yeah, year. Yeah, one year. One more year. Uh, we have an annual investment. $3,302. These are on call agreements for mechanical work on the boilers, chillers. Do you remember what that first one was? Sorry, sorry about that. Okay. 9,211. 211. Okay. And right. this one is how much? $3,302. That's for the annex building. And then the probation building. Stated. So moved. Second. Any questions? 
Rob? If why one year over locking that in for three years? I'm just I'm just asking a question. It seems to me that the prices, the way price is going up, to lock it in for three years, <coughs> this price would be not a bad deal. The, the thing about lock, my opinion, this is my opinion. The thing about locking in three years is once you lock in a contract for three years, okay, so maybe this company, the first, don't do as good a job as you thought they did before because they got a three year agreement. They're mm -hmm. not held accountable mm -hmm. every year to come back and get, get your contract. The, the second one is we've got a brand new maintenance man coming in. Maybe, maybe in the meantime, something will change after he gets through and maybe he wants to change something. So, so I think I think a year at this point is, is the best. I don't know what you guys think, but that's my reason. Here, that's kind of what we talk about things in the past. Yeah. So, you see another year, Carrie gets along well, and you'd like to with him. Okay. Anybody else? Good. Got your team. Did they get that? Okay, motion to approve these contracts. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> it's one of the I'll make that motion. Second. I'll that motion carries through. Okay. That's fine. I'll just, I'll get to okay. Uh, any other old business? Oh, gosh. Seems like it was not, but go ahead. No. Okay. I'll add it. No. Christine? No. Old business? She was a new business. I don't know how do you know. Um, Boy, I'm drawing a blank. Seemed like I was going to say something. Oh, well. Yeah, about a minute and a half. It yeah, wasn't important. <laughs> <laughs> New business? Oh, oh, got two oh, hands. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go all hands now. John? Uh, boy, we sat here. Katie came up with some information on the bridge. She'd asked how long the closure would be. Uh, she found out that it was going to be 50 to 75 days. 75 days. Oh, okay. So that's, that's a lot better. A lot better than what I thought. For some reason, I was thinking it wasn't too terrible. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Thanks, Katie. Of course. Gail. I'd like to call an executive meeting with you and your appointed uh, officials uh, moving forward with budgets and other things that we've had issues with so we know our proper place and um, the policy that's in the count that's in place for the county. Do you want council at that, too? I don't care who's there. I, I want an executive meeting. But I just want one with uh, all three of you. All three of us. And, I, and your appointed officials. This this has gone on long enough. We you go up battling back and forth. We need to be a little bit more professional and move forward in a positive way. Well, I'll have to see if that falls under. There, there's like a list of five things we do an executive session on. So we'll, we'll, I'll check with Holly. And if we can, we'll do it. If not, it'll be a public meeting. Sure. So I'm just. Well, I need to do the appropriate. Sure. We'll, we'll Whatever. Get, we'll get yeah. a call. I see Holly writing it down. She's gonna check on it for us. Okay. Anything else? New business from anybody? Okay. Here we go. Entertain a motion to recess. So moved. Second. Okay. All favor. Motion carries three zero. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.